sweet roof sweet roof sweet roof sweet roof sweet podcast cast cast Wanted to see and um, that brought you here, so he's a Grammy Award winner. So with over 20 million albums, and he's a notable DJ as well as an MC, and producer, which I thought was funny because they said MC, and I'm like, I'm glad they said MC on the on the bio. So without further ado, let's give a round of applause, a loud round of applause for DJ Macy, y'all. Make some noise. What's up, Jacksonville? How you doing? What's good? All right, so uh, welcome to Jacksonville again. You're not a stranger to Jacksonville. I'm uh, glad I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, the last time I witnessed you uh, spin, it was uh, I want to say like two years ago, and it was uh, uh, Dave Chappelle show was here. Was anybody uh, next door when he when he was DJ? And you stayed like another night. That was crazy, man. Could you explain that? And do you do you even remember it? Because it was like two, three in the morning we was doing this. Well, <laughs> my brother Troy McMahon, we been, we go back thirty years. Every time I get with him, it's always to the extended hours. So yeah, right. sounds good. Speaking of thirty years, man, this is uh, the thirty year anniversary of Three Feet High Rising. So let's give a round of applause for that accolade right there. Y'all remember that out, right? Man. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm old in hip hop. <laughs> but, but you're great in hip hop. We're going to be going now. Appreciate that, so. Thank you. So, uh, let, let everybody know how, the, how that feeling is to have that accolade. For 30 years in, in, in hip hop, explain how that feeling is. Um, it's got to be a big feeling. It's, a, it's surreal. It's very surreal. Um, I'm still chasing the dream. I, I, can't, I'm, I mean, I've been a part of hip hop when it was projected to be this or not be, you know? Um, it was just really a reprieve from our third world situation as black people, you right. know, coming up in the 80s and 90s, you know? So for it to turn into like the number one selling music in the world, you know, hip hop created jobs for people who don't even like the music, you know? Right, right, right. So, you know, it's still surreal and I'm still, I feel blessed. That's all, I truly feel blessed. All right, sounds good. So, I was reading, um, I'm, a, I'm a hip hop head. So, you started off in Brooklyn, you were born in Brooklyn, correct? And then you moved to Long Island. So, uh, to save time or whatnot, just explain how that transition was. Because you was in Brooklyn when you know hip hop was emerging. Yeah. And then you went to Long Island. So was it a different transition? Or how, how, did, how did you bring the elements that you got in Brooklyn to Long Island and then you made plug one, plug two. Well, honestly, um, those were the years I was just harnessing my craft. It was happening around my community, especially in the boroughs. So moving to Long Island, I actually thought I was getting further away from my dream than closer to it. And what was crazy that it all happened when I moved to the suburbs, you know, um, Prince Paul, who was a part of a group called Stetsasonic at the yeah, time. Prince Paul, indeed. Yeah, and he actually is uh, responsible for the, the, excuse me, the, the discovery of De La Soul. Yeah, so <clears throat> meeting up with Paul and meeting up with the guys in high school, pretty much summer school, because we all yeah, failed. Yeah, failed. Yeah, failed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so right after summer school, we would go to my crib and start working on music. But Finding out what everybody was into was part of the journey, you know? Because around that time, everybody did did it all. Graffiti, break dancing, you know, pop locking, rapping, DJing, and then you found out what you really love and you stuck to it, you know? Right. Cool, well, uh, let's see. We gonna go for, uh, 
spin faster to three feet high rising. De La Soul is dead. My favorite album from you guys was uh, Stakes is High. So, everybody remember what Stakes is High? Yeah. <laughs> Preach sure. Yeah, so do you feel Rest like, in peace, Jay Dillon. Indeed, indeed, rest in peace, Jay Dillon. Indeed, indeed, so, do you feel like that album holds importance to uh, hip hop and what's going on today? Because I felt like when I heard that album in 1996, I was a junior in high school, so I still was trying to figure out like the administrative side of hip hop, you know, because I was just an MC, so I didn't understand all that. But does that album resonate well in this time of the time of day? Um, I've always said, um, Sticks is high gave birth to Nas's hip hop is dead. Stakes is how I gave birth to Jay-Z's 444, you know. Um, you know, around that time, it was definitely a record for us that was uh, whether we were going to continue in this music game or not, just based on the transitions of the style of music, what was becoming more prevalent than others. There was just completely no balance. And that's exactly what we're dealing with right now. No, no balance a bit of uh, redundancy, also um, ignorance, all out, you know? Um, but yeah, that was something we stressed then, but at the same time, hip hop is dead to stress that, and 444, you know? So I, I'm glad to be a part of that alma mater, yeah. you know, sure. and, and, and still trying to say something with a message and, and balance out this culture. Definitely, definitely. So today, uh, is National DJ Day, so make some noise for the DJs in the house. Make some noise. Salute. Shout out to all, all the DJs. Myself, yeah, Salute all the to DJs. my brother, Guru. Yeah, all man. Right. Yeah, man. So, what makes a what makes a DJ? What is your definition of, of, of a good, skillful DJ? Like, what is your definition? Um, one definitely being able to mix two records on beat. That's one, and then um, playing good music, but also playing your vibe. You know, there's one thing to give the people what they need. Well, give them what they want, but then give them what they need, which is your element of surprise, your vibe. Yeah, I think you um, should be educated at the same time, you know, when you're playing music. So what's your favorite uh, DJ technique? Is it uh, scratch and mixing? I like it all, man. You like it all? You know, I like it all. I think, you know, I think you're a well-rounded DJ if you can embody it all, you know. And um, it's all a part of it, you know. But I think, you know, nothing is greater or less than the other, you know. Right. All right, so a personal question. So the, the whole Native Tongue movement. Anybody, Native Tongue, make some noise if you know about Native Tongues? Jungle Brothers, Tribe yeah. Called Quest, Moni Love, Queen, Queen Latifah. Yeah. So explain that energy. Like, how, how was that working with that, that group of people? I couldn't imagine working with all those people. Like, y'all did I mean, buddy. It was we, were, we was all kids coming up, so it's it's amazing to think back now what everybody has, you know, what we were aspiring to be and what we all came became today, you know? Especially when I look at Latifah, you know? Yeah. The queen is really the queen, you know? Sure. Not just in music, but in business, you know? Um, Moni is doing her thing. She was able to sustain still being here in America, right, coming right. from England, you know? You know, and us in Jungle and Tribe, we still do music, we produce music, we travel, we tour, you know, we can really celebrate 30 years of three feet along with Public Enemy and Wu-Tang, so. Yeah, because they're doing, they're, they're 30 years as well. Public yeah, Enemy and 25 for, yeah, for uh, Nation, Nation of Million, takes the Nation of Million to hold us back. Right. And Wu-Tang's uh, 36 Chambers, 25th anniversary. Right. And what I'm loving about that tour, it's the last of the groups, man. It's not really many groups in hip hop. Much. That was that was my uh, my next question actually, because they're going on y'all going on tour in the UK. Yeah. So I just wanted to know what was the expectation that that you have in regards to is it is it what is the expectation to the consumers to yourself to all that? Um, I'm excited to be around everybody. There's a camaraderie amongst us, especially in that era. So I'm excited just to get on tour. And, See everybody every day backstage, smoke weed with Ghostface Killer, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm bugging out with flavor, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, man, you know, PE's like 
uncles. They're like right. not even really big brothers. They're more like uncles to us. So I'm waiting to really kick it with everybody. Yeah, man. I, I feel like that's going to be, I know that's going to be a crazy tour. So good luck with that, man. And uh, we'll be supporting you. So uh, music wise. So you know what? Let me go into this section right here. So on Bruce Week Podcast, if you have not heard it, we have two sections where we do, one is called What's Good in Duval, and then the second one is What's Your Groove? So what's your groove, uh, what's good in Duval? So what's good in Jacksonville, basically? Like, you tell me something that, while you're here, what you like to do, what you, you know, what, just tell me anything good about it. <laughs> outside of Troy Mendel, you know, outside of <laughs> So, uh, but we're gonna do first, what's your groove? So what's your groove segment is basically, you tell us, what we should be listening to, what you love, uh, what you like to do while you DJ, whatever the case may be. So, what's your groove? My groove, my groove in particular is funk and soul. Old school funk and soul. I think you gotta know where it's coming from and know where it's going, you know? Correct, yeah. And all that music back then just felt really good because it came from a, a real genuine place, which is people's heart and soul. There was no, right. There was no thinking about a chorus, a hit record, or none of that, charts. It was just all about making great music and having chemistry with the people in the room that you were making music with. So funk and soul is definitely something that sits there to my groove. Okay. And we're going to hear some of that, that funk and that groove tonight. Yeah, right? absolutely. Make some noise if y'all ready to hear some funk. So my, mom was so, my mom's is responsible for that. Word up, man. We'll talk to you. <laughs> all right, so the next thing is uh, what's good in Duval. AKA was good in Jacksonville, Florida. So <laughs> when you come here, like you know, when, you, when you're here, can you name one thing that you like—the restaurant, the food, the people, or you know, anybody in particular? I've been coming to Jacksonville since 1991. Well, you, I'm sure you have a list of things that you can tell me. <laughs> and um, the one thing that come up very consistent are the attractive women. In Jackson. Round of applause for all the beautiful ladies in the house. The beautiful ladies from Jacksonville. They shame the clap, but they got money out there now. But um, come to find out, a lot of them grew up eating possum out here. You know what I mean? I was, <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. That was weird to me. That was weird. That was weird. Okay. okay. That was weird. Okay. So, I got to be, be careful with a possum suit. You know what I mean? That was weird. <laughs> Hilarious, man. Hilarious. <laughs> All right, so uh, one, la one last question. Um, I saw online, it was a picture of uh, uh, you and Mac Miller in the studio at night. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I want to say rest in peace to Mac Miller. His yeah. birthday was yesterday, so yeah, let's give right. a round of applause. Rest in peace for Mac Miller. Rest in peace, Mac. Yeah. So what, was, what, what were you doing? Were you working with him or just listening to tracks? How, uh, how did that go? Um, what's crazy is that was the first day I met him. Uh, we were both in uh, Los Angeles working at uh, Ski TV. Ski has a big production place. And um, he happened to be upstairs where all the the uh, audio and visual media stuff was at. And doing an interview with Ski, I was in a studio, Ski's main studio, and somebody came downstairs and said, Matt Muller's doing an interview with Ski, and he brought up Daylight, Native Tongue, what he grew up on. So I rushed up there to hear the rest of the interview. And I walked in and he and I clicked from right from right from the door. Right. And then that night we made a song and we've been in touch heavily since then, you know, and then he passed and and uh Raekwon turned around and turned around and did a song together. Very nice. Mac just been, you know, he definitely been um you know, one of the ones that had carried the torch. As far as real lyricism, you know, recognizing the past, paying a lot of homage to the past, and um, doing a good job of introducing it to the audience today, you know. But it's just definitely sad that, you know, this generation is heavily into narcotics and shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, for real. Yeah. yeah definitely. All right, so uh, I said this is my last question, but this, it's cool. this is my last question, it's cool. personally. Favorite De La Soul song and why? That's like saying, what's your favorite child? I know, I know, I know. <laughs> That's why I asked the question, to make it tough for you, sir. Uh, I mean, they all kind of hold a special thing. Um, I mean, 
they all have a special moment. If anything, I guess, I guess out of the ones I play the most would probably be Ego Tripping. I play it the most, you know. Um, Balloon Mind State happened to be one of the albums I think was very dear to us as a group, but it didn't even do well. It didn't even sell much. It was great though. But that was one of the, that was one of the records we could truly say we were all individually confident as producers. Like we didn't really lean on each other or we didn't really lean on Paul. Everybody brought what they had to the table. Correct. You know, so it was like one of the most confident produced records, you know. But it didn't sell shit. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Understood. But it was still a great album and it was a great moment in hip hop. So we thank wanna uh, thank you for that. Appreciate sure. it. All right, that's my, my time on the Groove Sweet Podcast. Let's give a round of applause for DJ Lacey. Respect y'all. Just everybody have a good time tonight, man. You know, I just like for people to dance and party. There ain't nothing really extra sexy about what I'm doing here. But I do play music that make people want to make babies. So make sure, make sure who you dance with, that's who you want to be with. <laughs> Well, might, be some, might be a lot of court cases. So. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> One more time, everybody, for DJ Maciel. Peace. <laughs> One love, y'all. Sweet, 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 sweet